What's up, you guys? I hope you're having a blessed up Friday night. And today is going to be a workshop style. Um, just going to go through conscious love, what conscious love is, and soulmate checklists and all that fun stuff. February is just one of self appreciation and self uh, building self worth, as well as getting really clear on what you intend to bring into your life. It doesn't matter if you're in a relationship, if you are doing the solo thing right now, working on your vibrational cleanup and opening up your heart, healing your heart, getting ready to become that type of person that's going to be bringing in uh, whatever it is that you want to bring in, but bringing it in intentionally. I think is a really key thing. One of the things that we learn um, is that one of the most critical life decisions you can make is who you choose as your partner. And these are things that we don't talk about. A lot of us haven't had a healthy relationship or experience as we're brought up of what healthy relationships looks like. And so typically we take on the familiar, the known, um, the lessons of what we are, our body and our cells and our nervous system thinks is familiar and safe, even though it might be harmful. So we're about to just really dig into that and to gain that clarity. And then just like very, very cool exercise that 
will bring a lot of awareness to you in order to just give you the clarity you need. And if you are in a relationship, who you're becoming as you're introducing that person to one another. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Share my slides from a past past version of myself in this lifeline. And this is really about how to attract conscious love, um, love on your terms and your most compatible soul mate, your most compatible partner. So thank you so much for being my Valentine, even though it's a little bit over Valentine's and just tell you a quick story of who I am and why this presentation is uh, is important to me. Let me just pull up my notes real fast. Where did it go? Hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll just do this. Okay. So just a quick story. Um, so I have been married in the past. I had a conscious uncoupling, which was awesome. Um, it was like a beautiful journey of, of um, clearing a slate as we moved forward, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we're not really like clear on, on what we're wanting. We, we just like, we fall in love with somebody. We don't really talk about vision or goals. A lot of times we're just super confused. We don't even know where we're going. And I think people do need to take classes on relationships, something like I know that I would always advise people moving forward. So it was a beautiful conscious uncoupling. We did it uh, together. We had a therapy and we did shadow work and we had really uh, worked separately on ourselves as becoming whole human beings. And then after about a year, of doing the inner work, we both sat down and made a decision that we both really loved each other enough to know that we weren't going in the same direction moving forward for our future. And since we didn't have any children involved and whether if you do or not, like we decided that um, on healthy terms to just decide to divorce. And so there are segments where you have conscious uncouplings. You can have a conscious uncoupling with friendships. You can have a conscious uncoupling with, with business relationships and a conscious uncoupling with, uh, with re relationships that you have. And, uh, so that was like one, one story of a long-term relationship it was about like a nine year relationship. And then another one as to like why this is super important to me was then after that, I got in a complete opposite was single for two years, um, had practice celibacy, and I I was in a really low point. Uh, COVID hit, and I went back to a familiar uh, a familiar space of uh, uh, unhealthy love and what that was. And because I wasn't patient, and I started to get like irritable, and I was just very insecure during the time and uh, had lost work. And so a lot of things had impacted, which I had learned on a subconscious level of that every time I wasn't doing well in business is when I would really crave and desire a partner and put my faith in another human being versus in God. And so I had gotten into something uh, very unhealthy and every single part of myself was like, do not do this, do not do this. And I did, and I went into it, and the it was about a year and a half of a relationship of just being completely gaslit, manipulated, uh, psychologically, mentally abused, and uh, physically drugged out, swindled out of three hundred thousand dollars. And partner had, by God's grace, um, God had taken him, and he had died in a car accident. And so that was like another relationship that I had really learned a lot about myself. I'd done a lot of a lot of healing, a lot of therapy, a lot of um, shadow work in that season, the last two and a half years of really getting clear on why, number one, I had made the conscious decision to engage in that type of a relationship and taking uh, full responsibility and ownership that you know, when you get into a relationship, whether it being healthy or unhealthy, it's still a conscious decision. It's a it's a decision of the the choices you're making. And maybe during that uh, situation, something I learned in theta work and belief work was that we learn virtues. And and that was a relationship of taught me what love was not. And I had to learn in such an extreme way with that's just the way that I chose to learn. And a lot of this work that I teach is just about prevention. And during the time, just very humiliated, very embarrassed of getting into that, especially knowing what I know 
But then there's that rebellious side. And then the relationship that I had with the males in my life um, as a child and the things that we're drawn to energetically and understanding that everything that we bring into our life is an internal, um, an external expression of internally what maybe we have not processed or healed from, or maybe we're just not consciously aware of. And so as you start to unravel certain things, when you get into relationships, typically they will trigger you. So if you're in something and you're not verbally communicating, it's important to have strong advisors that are able to see things from a neutral standpoint to help you with gaining clarity so that maybe you really can get stronger and closer than ever. But the thing is, um, I got to interview Elena Cardone in 2017, I actually just found the interview and she was uh, talking about the story of the Clydesdales and Clydesdales, if you've ever heard the story is like one of the strongest workhorses and the workhorse can pull about 8,000 units on its own. Now, when you get two Clydesdales together, they're just working side by side. They, you would think they could pull like 16,000 units, right? They could pull over, I think around like 32,000 units. And when you have them working side by side, but they're working together and they can pull, you would think 32 would be 64. They pull over hundred thousand units together, working side by side and working together as a team. And so the power of uh, not only working side by side with somebody, but also like working as a unit, you can achieve 10x is what she was saying and so i'm going to take some of the principles she even shared about being in a really healthy relationship and her and grant's cup um goals were to be a power couple and so it's cool because you take bits and pieces from people that have successful relationships that have been working as a unit for years and then you have people like myself where i'm like well hold on i haven't attracted the best patterns so let me take time in my single season to really prune and to become the type of woman that I know I want to attract. And one of my favorite quotes is, you don't get what you want, you get what you believe you deserve. And so a lot of times we don't believe we are deserving of that type of conscious love. And so this is why this presentation is really important, is just to bring awareness, as well as some uh, strategies for you to just get clear on what it is that you want to bring in. So even if you do start in your dating season, like I am, you can start to be very clear on maybe the type of questions you can ask the person and you just um, already know, you just already know. And so when you do get asked out, you do, you do when you're super clear on what you want, there are certain things where you don't have to share your energy and your time. You can invest that energy instead in like maybe going to a workout class or studying a new skill set versus spending energy and time on dating sites or spending your energy and time on dates where it's just like you're wasting your time, you're wasting your life because you already knew clearly that this person wouldn't isn't going to be a great a great fit. And some, and all you need is one. So there's power in words. If you're somebody that keeps saying, it's just hard to find somebody out there, you gotta cut that because your words are so powerful. And all you need to remember is you exist and you're doing the work. And so your partner is doing the work and just keep praying over and prophesizing over the person. They're gonna feel your prayers. So let's get into this and let it be right now about clarity. So let's go. Where is this here? Okay, so tonight's agenda is we have a soulmate checklist. Um, if you want it, just let me know. We have a complement versus a completion, which is some one of the example I just shared. Upgrade and raising your standards, power of intention, putting it all into action. One of my favorite quotes still to this day, that something, you know, when you read something or you listen to something, which I hope that you do get this in the presentation, something inside of you just shifts. Like you go through something and something like in your heart, just it, like it hits you in the heart or something in your mind shifts. And this was one of those quotes for me. Marianne Williamson says, we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? 
Your playing small does not serve the world around you. There is nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. We are, as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So you have to train yourself to see yourself differently and no, it's more than okay to look, feel, and be the best version of yourself. It's actually your birthright. So soulmate checklist. What you're going to do is one of the best ways to identify what you want to have that clarity is you do something called a T-chart. T-chart is really just a, a clarity exercise. And what you do is you would just turn the paper halfway and you would make a T like this. And on the right hand side, you would just write out everything that you've experienced that you don't want to experience ever again. Okay. I told you literally. Um, so after after my last partner had passed away in a car accident, and I went to get tested because I was the business and um we were trying to have a child, and he like couldn't get me pregnant, thank God on that one. But um, he was also had many other women that he was doing that to. So that my biggest fear, the moment that I found out that I was one of many women, many, many, many women, like literally within a day, who knows, um, I went and I get tested, I got tested for AIDS, I got tested for STDs, I got tested for everything. And um, so one of the things that I would write on side of here is that, you know, you want somebody that you'd write everything of what you want to experience. And when I went to get tested, the woman, I was telling her the story. I was like, listen, straight up, this is why I'm in here. Like, I don't know what you need to test for. I've never been in this situation before. Um, and she, I told her the story and she's like, oh my God, that literally, like, I can't even believe what you're telling me right now. Like this sounds like a movie. And then a month later, the movie, The Swindler came out and literally that was my relationship. And I was like, I was like, I wouldn't even watch this movie that I just lived in for a year and a half of this complete like, like craziness. Like I wouldn't even watch the movie because I wouldn't even want to create like a memory of this, let alone I've actually lived it for a year and a half. And so when you are clear on experiences that you don't want to take into your life anymore, you just write it down because that those negative experiences are our clarity for you to decide like this is not what I ever want ever again. And so you can write out somebody like that um, being cheated on. Um, you could write uh, gaslighting or somebody who doesn't communicate people that are like has no communication skills. You could write out um, abusive. Like maybe that's just all you've ever known. I grew up with a lot of emotional and verbal abuse and um, I just, I don't want it ever again. And so you could say that, you could write out um, maybe somebody who's unhealthy. They don't take care of themselves. You could write out, um, you don't want anybody who's a smoker. Maybe you've been with a smoker before, somebody that's an alcoholic or somebody that's in, in, in addiction. You, I mean, you don't have to be extreme. Like I'm writing out, I literally have been in extreme relationships. Um, but you can write out whatever it is that you don't want to experience ever again in here. And you can write out somebody who um, is lazy, um, somebody that doesn't appreciate. Maybe you have children, somebody that uh, maybe in the past you had somebody that didn't want kids. And maybe you on the other hand side, you write somebody that actually welcomes your children and welcomes your family. And maybe if you are in a relationship, you can write out the things that you just don't really. And here's one thing, though. OK, if you are with somebody right now, I don't want to get you guys in trouble. So you have to make an alliance that there are going to be no repercussions and this isn't to hurt each other. These are just things that you're you're being honest with one another on what it is that really bothers you about each other and things that you really don't care for. And then some of the things aren't always going to necessarily shift and change. And I'm going to share in the second part of what 
goes on and how the power behind this. But to be honest of the things that you don't want to attract. So if you're in a relationship and the other person is a workaholic and they're emotionally unavailable, you could write that down. And maybe they're physically present, but they're emotionally, they're unavailable. They're not there when they're physically there. And so um, you can write that down or they don't know how to um, express their feelings. Maybe they, they stonewall you and they emotionally shut down. Or maybe they just, um, you know, like there's so many different things you can write in there that you know, maybe they're, they're not taking care of their health and it's impacting them and you're constantly worried about them because they're like not sleeping and then they're irritable and they're this and that. So you can even write that, write that down. Also, like all the things that you just are not liking experiencing, you'd write that on the right hand side. You make a list of all the qualities, characteristics. Um, I know I said like of the perfect person, but you have to start with the things that are not desired. And this will help you on the left hand side of writing the complete opposite. So if you wrote, for example, cheated, then you can write um, faithful and loyal. Somebody who is also monogamous, something I learned in theta healing and the belief work is that there are people with uh, polygamous genes that don't even realize like they are polygamous genes. So they have a really hard time, no matter how much they love you, they just they don't have monogamy genes and not that it's an excuse or a reason to go and sleep around. Like that's a contract that you both need to agree on, especially if you are in a relationship, there has to be that communication of what type of relationship you guys have. Um, I personally want somebody with monogamous genes. I'm an, I've got for sure monogamous genes. Um, I want somebody that is a strong communicator um, and you would just write that by the complete opposite. Somebody that knows how has self mastery and knows how to like have strong emotional intelligence where when they're going through something, they have their healthy time out. I want a man of God. Oh, another thing too, is if when you're, if you're single and you want somebody of the same sex, you would say that you want to bring in somebody that is a man. But if you're somebody that wants the same sex, you could say, so I want a woman. Or if you're a man, you say, I want a man. It just depends on you need to call in your most compatible soulmate. But make sure you're very specific on what it is that you're wanting to bring in. Do you want a man? Do you want a woman? Do you want somebody who's got who's polygamous? Somebody that's monogamous. Um, my first and foremost is, well, besides those two is also a man of God and they need to be able to put God first, put God above our relationship, put God about of front of their business, put God in front of them, like their time with God of being representation of God. And that has not always been the case. And so when you're writing that list, you can write the complete opposite on the other side also. Um, somebody that I feel like I have a regulated nervous system around somebody that I trust to lead me and to lead our family, a leader. Um, I want somebody who does run their own business. I want somebody financially stable and healthy and wealthy. I definitely don't want to struggle <laughs> financially healthy. I don't want somebody who makes a lot of money and then they're impulsive or compulsive and just does stupid stuff with it. Um, somebody who's responsible. Um, they're driven, purpose driven. Um, somebody that also wants to build something with me, not just do something separately or just to provide. I want to build with somebody. I want to build and create impact with somebody. And so that's really important to me personally, uh, being an entrepreneur and, um, just, I just, even if I have somebody where I can take off and they make like millions and billions of dollars and I don't have to work, I need I believe that every single person, especially us women, need to find something that fulfills you, that you feel, even if it's volunteer work or non for profit, that you feel like there's a purpose and you feel like you're contributing back to society because it's something that the only way to feel that fulfillment and for you to feel like even 
contributing to your self-worth and your self-value is being of service to other people and feeling like you're making a contribution into the world. Um, and so that's really, really important. I've just seen that in the quality, overall quality of life and the overall quality of happiness. Now you're creating this T-chart. Step two, you're gonna go through the list after you finish the, the first part, you're gonna go through the list and you're gonna circle all the qualities and characteristics that you are not. Here's where this gets fun. So if you're with your partner, or you're in a relationship and you're looking at each other like, yeah, see, I want like you to be emotionally available and emotionally present. Well, this also comes back to the things that you're pointing out might be some things that you also need to work on. Just saying. So you're going to go through here and you're going to write out, am I, am I a woman of God? Do I turn to God in, in areas of uh, trial and tribulation? Or am I looking for validation outside of myself, outside of God? Um, am I sitting in my meditation and am I praying? Am I, am I doing all the things that I need to do to keep connected to God, to put God first um, so, and then be able to put my partner second? Am I open and receptive to, to be able to be led? Or am I super stubborn and uh, not trusting a man to be able to lead me? Like, because I've just done it for 40 years and just figured it out on my own and have been around weak men my whole life um, as far as like an actual relationship. And so uh, that's something to also work on is to be able to, can I be submissive to somebody else? Can I allow myself to be led by somebody um, um, can I, am I, is my heart open with as much as it's been hurt and I feel like it's been betrayal? Like, have I worked, how's my heart posture? Is my heart posture good? Is it strong? Am I, am I upright? Do I, how do I carry myself? How do I represent myself? And then, um, am I healthy? Am I healthy mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, not just physically, we're talking about the wholeness of health. And then um, do I trust myself? Can I lead myself? Uh, am I financially healthy, wealthy, and responsible? Like how are how is my relationship with my finances? Am I trustworthy around money? Um, am I able to build and build into somebody else? So we want to take these things and also like come back to am I these things? And the things that you are not, you can circle. And one thing that I have intentionally been working on specifically the last year in a few months has been to be a woman of God. And if you've never had an experience of what that's like, you can ask in, in belief work and theta work, we learn like a uh, creator of all that is show me what it feels like to be a woman of God. Show me what it feels like to be financially healthy, wealthy, and free. Show me what it feels like. Give me an experience of what it feels like to be able to receive conscious love and unconditional love. Show me what it feels like to put my full trust into you. Show me what it feels like to be a strong communicator. Are you able to communicate things, especially during hard times? Not just when things are good, but what about when things aren't good, when things are really hard and you don't want to upset or hurt somebody else or you're in a space of like fear that somebody's gonna leave you because of a past experience? Are you still able to speak your truth? And so a lot of times what I've discovered is that a lot of people have never had an experience, so they don't know anything other than pain, anything other than betrayal, anything other than the abuse. And when you start to get curious about First off, clarity, so you know, because you already have had the experience of what you don't want, but when you start to, to establish and make this list of something that you do want, sometimes it freaks people out. Just like I talked about with the Marianne Williamson quote, it's like most people are actually afraid of the light than they are of the dark because the dark is familiar territory. But the light for many people can be unfamiliar territory. Now let's get the real work in. And the truth is like attracts like, you attract the external expression of what you are internally suppressing. As I mentioned earlier, the last several years have been a very strong vibrational cleanup. It's been an energetic vibrational um, cleanup on a soul level, on a core level, on a history level, on a genetic level, like so many different levels of 
cleaning and clearing and uh, moving past stuff. So we're going to shift in our intention of a compliment. So you don't need anyone, but you want them. And there are two complete people who complement one another versus a completion is you're looking for someone to fill your holes and securities in your shadow side. So the this goes back into Elena Cardone's example of what she was saying about with the Clydesdales. Now, when I'm talking about why I do always suggest couples come into this or when I do the work, uh, when people start to work with me privately or they join the inner circle, I always say like, listen, get your partner involved. And if they don't sign up, at least go back and teach them because this is going to impact not only your relationship, but if you have children or you're planning on having children, it's also going to impact your children tremendously. And the whole reason why um, people work so hard for the most part is for the children. I know my parents worked so freaking hard to give us a really good life, a better life, but it was to the expense of them. And I truly believe that you can have it all and you don't have to sacrifice. You don't have to. You have priorities but you don't have to compromise your peace. You don't have to compromise your heart and you don't have to compromise your health. You really don't. You can have it all. Um, and sometimes you just can't have it all at the same time. Something that I teach um, in one of the sections in the inner circle is that you have this like 10 areas of life tonight. We're just focusing on the romance and your compatible partner. Um, and by the way, you can apply this stuff also to your friendships and your inner circles. Like it doesn't just have to be about like your, like who are your soul friends? Who are the people that you allow the closest into your inner circle, into your heart? Um, so this is really about like that one, one out of the 10 areas. And in here, not only do we talk about like, well, what is your relationship like with relationships, but what is your belief system around relationships? What is your, what do you truly believe around relationships? Do you really believe that there's nobody out there for you because you're in your forties or your fifties or your thirties and you feel like your life is over? Do you feel like, um, there's no good men or women out there? I mean, don't you exist? Aren't you doing the work? I just had a conversation with a friend today. We're both in our forties and He's starting to really practice spiritual purification with his body. And, and um, you know, I don't drink anymore. When you see me right here, I'm drinking my my kombucha. Mm -hmm. Cheers to that. I do love the energy of pouring it in the wine glass. So, you know, I'm like, oh, we're talking about like love. And let me all fancy and put a little kombucha on my wine glass. So um, we we're just talking about the power of a uh, spiritual purification, which is also known as celibacy, the um, withdraw from sexual interactions until marriage. And we're talking about this because I'm like, man, this is an interesting conversation because we don't really talk about this as adults. You know, there was that movie out there, the 40 year old virgin. And, um, you know, people withstand like when they're 17, 18, 19, 20 in their early 20s, which still people get made fun of. But you know, why not create the new standards? Why not create the new rules? Because if you think about it, when you go into a situation and you leave, then what? How do you feel about yourself? Like you got a quick high, you got a quick fix, but then how's your soul? How's your spirit? How's your, your spiritual energy going? Do you feel better about yourself? Do you feel worse about yourself? The body is a subconscious. It carries the soul. It carries your spirit. It carries your heart. How's your heart? And so it's such a, such an intimate space of like where you're sharing yourself with because it's who you're sharing your spirit with. It's who you're sharing your heart with. And when you're going into the space of like complement versus completion, you got to be happy, healthy, and whole on your own. And even when you are in a partner, that's not their job. And it's not fair to impose them to make you happy or to make you – they can contribute to your happiness – just like they can contribute to your misery. <laughs> they can contribute to your happiness. They can contribute to your love. They can contribute to being a compliment to you. But even without them, you need to make sure that you're good. Like they can't make you go work out and put good food in your body and get good sleep and like be mentally like pure and mentally sharp. Like these, there are certain things in the line of self care that do contribute to self love because you can't fully love yourself if you're not taking care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And these are things that only you can do. And then that's things that only he can do or she can do. And then you come together 
as two whole human beings where you complement each other and there's interdependence. There's a word a lot of people don't understand is which is an interdependence where like I'm good on me, you're good on you. Together we come together and we like, just like the Clydesdale, we could pull over 100,000 units together. And as one, we're still strong. We're strong workhorses. We're strong human beings operating at like really high levels. But together, whoo, together we are powerful. And this is the same concept too with your friendships. I'm good on my own. My friends are good on their own. They're powerhouses. But when we come together, whoo, powerful, powerful. Conscious love. So let's get clear on conscious love. I, I'm not a big fan when you look up the word unconditional. I feel that God has an unconditional love for us. But as human beings, we need to have conditional love. Um, I think the only unconditional love is like more of like a mother to a child or a child to like a parent or uh, I don't even know, though. I still have like <laughs> I still have conditions where well no i have conditions where i don't like certain aspects of my parents but i will always love them but it is uh, i don't know it's conditional too because when they be acting crazy i um, won't be around them and i'm sure when i'm acting a certain way that they don't like they don't want to be around me either so there is like i do feel that there is conditional there is conditional love. And even in your relationship, you have to have like a clear communication of like, hey, here are the standards, here are the requirements. Um, this is the contract. It is a business. Even when you get married, like, hey, you are telling me I can trust you and you're going to stay loyal to me and you're not going to leave outside of the marriage when you have a craving and a desire. You're going to come to me. We're going to talk about it and we're going to figure out why you even have the craving and the desire to go outside of the marriage. We're going to have that conversation before it becomes a behavior or an impulse or an action where you cave in. And to create a safe space to have those conversations. And that was something that we always, I always talked about when I was married is we did have that conversation. And, um, you know, there was points where I was like, listen, I have a craving and desire. Like when you went to Brazil for two months and you, you left me here and we had that. And then after that, he never left me. <laughs> he never left me after that. But because I was very open and honest about it, I didn't act on the impulse, but I was super tempted. I didn't put myself in a position where I would have, but because if I did put myself in a position, which I could have easily, um, you know, I just didn't trust myself. And so that's another thing is don't put yourself in positions that you don't trust yourself that you know that your flesh isn't strong enough with. Those are conversations that if that's the that's the contract and those are the conditions and the terms within the marriage of the agreement, then those are things that, you know, you both need to abide by because that's your contract. Um, that's your business. That's your, that's your partnership. Um, there is trust does take time. And when it's lost, it also, if it's a, it's an agreement to want to stick with something, it, it will also take time. It will take time to prove that you are shifting and changing. Um, so conscious love means to be intentional about the kind of love that you want to receive and to give. What type of love do you want to receive and what type of love do you want to give? And you also need to know yourself enough to know like, wait, what, what, is, what are my love languages? There's a book called the, the Five Love Languages. What are my love languages? What are my friends' love languages? What is my partner's love language? What are my children's love language? What are my parents' love language? okay, um, this is how I like to give love. And then this is also how I like to receive love. When somebody does this for me, I feel loved. Uh, when I do this for somebody, they might not feel loved because it's not their love language. So how you receive love doesn't mean that's how they're going to receive love. To be deeply committed to growth mentally, physically, and spiritually and to step out of the ego and into positively charged emotional emotions like love. It's a deep sense of value and appreciation. So now we want to upgrade 
yourself. You're going to rate your relationship as a one through 10. Rate your relationships with relationships. Is it a one or one through 10? 10 meaning like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is like the best. I wouldn't change a thing. If I can keep it this way, I'll be so happy if it gets better. Like, whoa, I am just blessed beyond beyond anything. One means like, I don't even know what that experience is like. Like I I don't even know what it would feel like to find somebody that loved me and that I could receive that type of love. Like, I just don't, I don't know. Like my heart is just so closed off. List all the negative feelings on your relationships and being in a relationship. Um, and then what's your belief system around it? What is my belief system around relationships? Do I believe that if I exist, somebody else exists? Do I have faith? Do I have hope? Do I know that God created somebody just for me? Do I believe that my most compatible soulmate is still out there and is available? <laughs> um, don't be trying to ruin people's relationships, okay? Um, you know, is is that person available? Like, am I available? And then, and if you are in a relationship and you're like, yeah, like this is just not the relationship. Uh, as I mentioned, there is something called conscious uncoupling. Things don't have to end in, a, in mean, nasty ways. They can end in a appreciation and still love for one another and just know like, hey, you know, we've been together for a while and we've been together because it's familiar. We've been together because it's comfortable, but you deserve somebody that's going to love you the way that you need to be loved. And it's just not me, you know, it's just not me. So there's something called EFT work I will show you um, in just a second too, which is emotional freedom technique. It's such a really powerful exercise, which helps you allow cellular memory release. And then there's the power of our intentions. Building self from the inside, must you must first learn how to enjoy your own company prior to expecting others to enjoy their own. And you teach people how to treat you by the way you treat yourself. So just by the way that you carry yourself, the way that you speak, the energy that you hold, how you dress, how you present yourself, it just says a lot about you in, in the energy that you project out there. Are you constantly projecting um, sexual energy out there or are you, or are you consciously presenting like we're just powerful energy? Because that's the thing too, when you start getting into energy psychology and you're wondering why you're attracting like people that just want your flesh, We'll check the type of energy that you put out there because if you are an attractive person, but you're constantly putting this energy out there of like sexualization, then you're going to attract people that just want you for that. But do they want your spirit? Do they want your mind? Do they want you as a whole human being? How are you presenting yourself? What are you posting on your social feed? Um, was the energy, the attention that you're posting on your social feed? You know, I had to check myself on this of what I, how I used to post a few years ago. And I was posting things like, oh, yeah, I work out really hard for my body. So I'm going to do like a lot of like body pics and this and that. And then, of course, you're going to get weird ass comments or people that are going to say weird things because look at how you're presenting yourself and how you're treating yourself. Are you treating yourself like you're just a flesh and you're just a piece of meat? Or are you presenting yourself like, hey, I'm a high caliber human being. I'm a high caliber woman. I'm a high caliber man. How is your, your future partner going to be looking for you? I had a conversation with a friend on this the other day, like people with really like strong professions posting like pictures that are confusing people on what they even do and what they represent. And then they're wondering why they're attracting people that just want their body and not actually want to get to know them because they are confused on the impressions that, that you're putting out there. So treat yourself, like start to respect yourself and know that people there will be somebody out there that genuinely is looking for you and they're praying over you and they're praying for you and they're like praying God to work, like work on you. And, you know, when the time comes, you guys come together and you just won't meet in the most like who knows where, you know, who knows where, um, or maybe they'll find you on social media. I don't know. So you just got to build into yourself from the inside out and you got to be able to look in the mirror and like really love who you are. You look at your social feed and be like, man, like I'm so proud of that person. Like I'm in love with that person and I'm proud of that person. I respect that person. And this is somebody that I would, that whoever gets this person, me is going to be so blessed, 
so freaking blessed. And whoever I choose whew, is going to be so highly favored and blessed. Like they just are. I mean, they're going to be getting the wholeness of me. So let me get a little bit of sass. But, you know, they're going to like it. It's going to keep them on their toes. <laughs> So that is really the power of that. There's a there's a book called The Hidden Messages in Water, which is super powerful and just such a great a great book. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the presentation. This was really it. Uh, just supposed to be 45 minutes. Just a quick little way of gaining clarity, how to shape shift things, how to think things a little bit differently. And that's it. So if you guys are interested in more, if you want to schedule a 30 minute strategy call to cover like really the wholeness of all areas of your life, or you're going through something and you want to learn self mastery, emotional intelligence and how, how to operate at peak performance, no matter what. One thing I want you to understand, you're a human being before you're a business, before you're a role, a task and a responsibility. And so we all have backstories. That's why I'm very open about sharing my backstory and um, somebody, a lot of times people think I just have it all together and I do now, but it's because I know the duality and I know what life's like on the other side. And I just didn't want to live life like that anymore, you know, and there was two points in life where I was suicidal and I made a promise and I got this tattoo at 22 years old. I got the Jesus tattoo, but I definitely was not consistent um, with my relationship with God, I definitely wavered tremendously. And um, I just didn't want to be here anymore. So the first time that I was suicidal at 22, um, at 21, I promised that if I had overcome my addictions, that I would, if God helped me overcome my addictions, that because at that point, I reached out for help from several people and nobody was able to help me. Um, so I just surrendered to God at that point. And I promised God that if God was going to help me, um, then I would stay here and that I would help others. Then I wavered, you know, we get things good and then we forget about God and we're like, ah, I got this on me. I got this. Mm -hmm. And then, <laughs> and then overcame them, got into really healthy relationship, had all these things on my checklist, check, 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 check. But there was something in my spirit that was just like not fulfilled. And sometimes I think you can have this like beautiful box of things that are checked and you have, man, I, I have so many things I'd be, sh should be so grateful for. And the should is a very judgmental type of word, but there's so many things I know I need to be grateful for, but like something just doesn't feel right in my spirit. It doesn't resonate. Like this isn't, I know that I'm designed for like more and I'm not living it. I'm not living life my full potential. And then at the age of 30, 32, I believe I got in a really bad car accident and almost passed away. And I was in ICU for three, three days. And I just something shook my spirit. And it really woke me up because I'm like, man, okay, I could have died. Like we for sure were protected. I just remember like, as during the time my husband, his arm went across and he just said, I'm sorry. And cause it wasn't his fault. The lady just stopped in front of us and we're going 50 miles an hour, just hit her straight on and just stopped right in the middle of the road, like super weird. And he, I just remember saying, I'm sorry. And then, cause he, it was too late and we just hit them straight on. And I just remember like praying to God. And I felt that like, like, like an angel wing protected us because we were safe. But I think because our bodies were in such shock, I passed out. And then I, with the seatbelt, the impact, I had like internal bleeding and stuff like that. So they want to like cut me open, do surgery. But I know that we are protected. I know for sure that we're protected. And I know that when that happened, I feel like it was an opportunity. I don't know if you've ever had in life where you've had an opportunity where something inside of you like wakes up and you're like, I'm not living like I'm alive, but I'm not living. I'm not living in my purpose. I'm not taking, I'm not being courageous. I'm not taking that step of faith and the time is now. And so from there we had the conscious uncoupling because I knew that we were both really comfortable with each other. We were great friends. Um, I really admire him. He's just such an amazing human being, an amazing man. And he really deserved somebody that was going to love him to the capacity that he deserved to be loved. And I just wasn't capable of it. And so 
a part of me was like, I'm being selfish by just keeping him here and preventing him from being loved. And cause I just, I had a closed heart. I couldn't love. And I, um, so we did a conscious uncoupling and then I went off on my own and then had to go through that extreme thing to realize like, okay, Tanya, like wake up. And then two years ago was another time where I was suicidal again. And I was like, I don't want to be here. I'm humiliated. I'm embarrassed of what I had brought into my life, knowing all this stuff that I know and da, 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 da. And just like messing up over and over and over again. But the cool thing is that like God gives you a second chance and it's called today. So I hope that you take this um, to heart and that something shifts inside of your spirit and inside of your mind, and inside of your heart, where maybe this is something to get you to think a little bit differently and more intentionally of, of what you want and who you want to become and what you have to do to step into that person, but also what do you have to overcome in order to step into a higher expression of yourself and start to live life on purpose, live life intentionally and live life not on your terms, but on God's terms. And God's terms are your terms if they're if it's that whisper inside of your heart that that you're maybe shutting down and shutting up. So I would love to offer you a 30 minute strategy call if you are seeking clarity, if you're seeking guidance, if you're seeking support, if you're seeking somebody part of your lineup. Um, <laughs> I've been through a lot to know a thing or two, been coaching for over about 18 years, going on 19. And I've always had people a part of my lineup. And the the inner work parts of self mastery, emotional intelligence, and operating at peak performance, no matter what life throws at you. Um, without numbing yourself, without harming yourself, without harming others, really does come down to having a strong lineup and a strong support system um, so that you can be fast track and you don't have to go through, through things the hard way because there is another way and there are multiple paths to an end destination. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you have any questions, uh, just schedule your call at tanyacoliver.com forward slash call. And uh, sign up for the newsletters. If you want free newsletters or the commitment contract or the accountability, you can go to tannycoliver.com forward slash calendar. And you can always send me an email um, or leave a comment. Subscribe, share with your friends that you know will find value in this. Uh, just short and sweet, just like me. And I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys later. I'll see you on social media. Instagram at tannycoliver, youtube.com forward slash tannycoliver. All the links are at tannycoliver. TikTok just has an underscore and that's about it. All right, you guys have a blessed up night and I'll see you later. Bye.